Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, and thank you for joining today's conference, Regional Conservation Partnership Program Partner Portal Training. Please note that all participant lines will be muted until the Q&A portion of the call. We'll provide you with instructions on how to ask a verbal question at that time. You are welcome to submit written questions during the presentation, and these will be addressed during Q&A. To submit a written question, use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Choose All Panelists from the Send To drop-down menu. If you require technical assistance, send a note to the event producer. With that, I'll turn the call over to Rebecca Loster, RCPP Program Specialist. Please go ahead. Great. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for attending our second RCPP Partner Portal Training Webinar. Um, just a quick reminder that if you had attended our previous webinar on October 16th, we will be going over the exact same information, so you do not need to listen in on this webinar, um, but you are more than welcome to if you would like to have another refresher. Um, this webinar is also being recorded, and we will send out the recording of the webinar um, just like we did for the October 16th uh, here via email. And please, um, please note that the slide deck will also be resent out um, for those of you that are joining us today. Um, it was sent out previously, but um, again, we will resend all of the information as needed. So with that, can you go to the next slide, please? Thank you. All right, so today's topics, we're just going to give you a quick reminder of some of something that is going to be due here at the end of November um, for us within the portal. I'm going to quickly describe the portal purpose so that way you guys are aware of why we have the portal and what it is doing. And then we will go over a what the partner portal actually is. So we're going to give you a quick overview, uh, what the system access, how to access it will work, and then we will also give you a live demonstration of that. At the very end, we will take question and answers. Next slide, please. All right, so this is some, a reminder for those of you that have an active RCPP project. So all of you that are on the phone should have an active project at this point. Um, we, are, we did open this up to all of our partners from the 14-15 year through fiscal year 18. Um, those of you that are fiscal year 18 partners, you've already been in the system, so you will not need to gain new access to the system, um, so you will just continue continue to log in with your already established e-authentication and you access now. Um, but those of you that are from the fiscal year 14, 15 through fiscal year 17, right now it was going to be the first look that you've had with our RCPP portal. Um, and then please note, and we'll kind of say this a couple times throughout, that you may not have access to the portal at this exact moment in time. We are working on getting those with their level two e-authentication access to the portal now, um, but there is, there is a step process that you will need to make sure that you complete in order to gain final access. Next slide. Okay, so one of the big things that we are um, really needing your help in accomplishing this year is that the annual reports are due November 30th. So I know that some of you in your agreements may have an earlier due date, such as October 30th or October 31st, um, and that's okay. But we did have the vast majority of our RCPP agreements did state, um, I believe, from fiscal year 17 and maybe 16 um, and on that the annual reports were due by November 30th. So um, please keep that in mind as we are almost a month away from that and that this is where we needed to get you into the portal so that way you could see what is being done. So many of you are familiar with the questionnaire that you filled out last year. Um, you actually did it via an spreadsheet and then you handed it over to your NRCS lead state POC. So at that time, they actually went in last year into the portal and entered the information that you provided to them. So this year, we're having you, instead of fill out the Excel spreadsheet, give it to NRCS that's enter the information. We're just asking that you do it this year in the portal. 
Um, the other thing that you're going to be able to see is that you will be able to upload additional documents into the portal. So, um, for instance, if you would like to upload your 425, any written narratives that you also um, want to provide for your annual report, all of that can be uploaded into the system. So again, this will need to be done by November 30th um, or sooner if your agreement says that your annual report is due prior to that kind of November 30th time frame. Okay, so the RCPP purpose, or not, the RCPP portal purpose, I'm sorry. So what we really wanted to do was to allow you as our lead partners a more transparent way to manage your projects. So um, that, that does include everything from the application period all the way to you've been awarded an agreement and now you are in what we call that active project phase. So we want you to be able to see the information um, as much as possible. It also allows for additional communication with the lead state on your project details. So again, the state um, NRCS folks are able to get in and look at all of the projects that are within their state. Um, so if you have specific questions, they're able to log in and see exactly what you're seeing at the same time. So it just kind of helps facilitate that communication. The other thing is, is that we are working on additional portal functionalities for future. Um, so we know that right now this doesn't give us 100% of everything that you guys would probably like to see or NRCS would like to see, but just building towards that future. Um, so there are updates that do continue to happen. There are new functionalities that do um, happen periodically throughout the year. Um, but most of the time, you know, they are going to just be improvements that you will um, – that we shouldn't break the system, but should allow you to be able to use it better. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so with that, I will be turning it over to Kelly Naylor um, <laughs> with Creative um, to kind of go through what the portal will look like when you enter in as a, as a partner. All right, thank you, Rebecca. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelly Naylor, uh, Senior Business Analyst at Creative Systems and Consulting, um, and I was part of the development team that helped develop the RCPP Partner Portal application. Um, since some of you may not have seen the application yet, uh, today I'm going to demonstrate uh, certain aspects of the portal just to get you familiar, familiarized with the application and to, to show you what you'll be looking at. Uh, before going into the live demonstration, I'm going to go, go over the slide deck quickly that was prepared to highlight today's training topics, and important reference information. Now, everything that you'll see in the slide deck is what I'll go over during the demo in detail. So this slide deck I'm going to go over quickly, um, just so that way you know what's in the slide deck if you want to refer to it later. All right. All right, so for the training topics today, we're going to go over how to access the portal. We'll go over some homepage navigation, uh, give you a project overview so you can find, you know, what information is captured in your projects and where to find certain information on your projects. Then lastly, we'll go over the annual reports and other reporting uh, documents processes. All right, so the first thing uh, we'll do is go over how to access the application. Now, the portal is a web-based application, which means you can access the, access the application via your web browser. Uh, there are two entry point links, and I'll demonstrate both today. All right. Next, we'll also go over how to request access. For those of you that may not have access, um, we can show you how to obtain that and what the process is for that. Uh, along with that information, I'll explain how EOS is integrated with the login process and the importance of having your EOS level 2 before uh, getting access into the system. Next, we'll go over some homepage uh, navigation components where you can find certain information like your project tabs, um, help desk information, videos and guides, and things like that. So that way you can uh, navigate the system to find the information that you need. Once we're logged into the application, um, we'll go over your project overview so that you can find um, certain information, um, you know, how to access the projects and what the project list looks like. Once you're in your project, I'm sorry, we'll also show you how to search for your projects um, using the global search. 
And once we're inside a project, we can give you an overview of the record components, um, you know, what the highlights panels are, what certain subtabs contain, um, various information related to these projects and certain action buttons so that you know um, how to use the system. And finally, we'll go into the reporting processes, uh, starting with annual reports. I'll show you how to find your annual reports, how to fill them out and submit them. And lastly, we'll go over some other reporting document requirements. Again, how to satisfy those reports and what that process looks like. All right. Sorry about that technical glitch there. <laughs> All right. So the first topic I'll cover is how to access the application. Um, first, uh, as I was mentioning before, USDA Level 2 EOC is required to gain access to the application. If you don't have EOS Level 2, you can request it through the link that's provided in the PowerPoint presentation that we just went over, which Rebecca and I will work together to send that, send that out to you after this presentation. Um, once you have that Level 2 EOS, and the second step would be getting your uh, application user access set up. So those are that's the two-step process. So once those two steps are complete, um, you'll be able to access the portal from your web browser. Uh, just one note, for a full, uh, uninterrupted experience, we really recommend using Chrome or the latest version of Internet Explorer, as this is a newly built application, and some of the older uh, browsers are just not supported. All right, so as I was mentioning, there are two entry ports points into the application. The first is the public site, which is what you're seeing now, and the second is a direct link, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. So the public site is for public use, um, for to view RCP information and does not require a login. So just as a quick overview so you can see what you're looking at here, um, the first little component on this public site is an opportunity to look at projects on a map. If I were to click view projects on a map, it will open up a map view with filters at the top. So for example, let's say you're located in Virginia and you want to see what projects are currently happening in Virginia. So I can select the lead state of Virginia and you'll see what happens once I select that. Virginia will get zoomed in, you'll see that view here. And on the right hand side, you'll see a list of projects um, where Virginia is the lead state. Um, you can click learn more next any, under uh, any project box here to get more information on that specific project. So you can project name, lead state, any partner states uh, working on with the lead state on this project, um, et cetera. Okay. All right, let me go back home here. All right, so that's the map. The next uh, set of components on this public site are what I call the access points. You see these three cards here. We have one login point for NRCS staff. We have one for partners, and we have one for new users. Now, the two that you guys will be using are most likely going to be the partner login. So, the, for those that already have access, or once you know you obtain access, you can log into the system through this partners login option here. Um, for users that don't have access and want to request access. That can be done through this uh, new user section, which I'll go over in a moment. And finally, at the bottom here, we have just some uh, basic information. Uh, we have a list of tabs. So for the program information, this will give you some basic um, deadline information uh, where you can also download the APF or announcement for program funding. You can also download and look at a list of full proposal questions to prepare you for the next uh, proposal phase. Um, next tab, we have announcements. Any announcements that are uh, 
provided by the RCPP program team will be listed here. Next, we have a list of approved three proposals, a list of active projects, and some totals by fiscal year. So again, just to give you a quick rundown of what kind of information you can find on the public site and how to navigate this public site. Okay. So as uh, Rebecca mentioned before, some of you probably already have access and others may not have access. So um, if you or someone that's part of your partner organization needs to request access, what you can do is come into this public site and under the new user section, you can click start here. And it will bring you to a page with, with, for a request access form. So all you need to do is from the drop down list, select that you're from a partner organization. And certain fields will appear that you will have to fill out. Now every single field on this form is required. Um, your name, your partner organization, your business address, et cetera. Uh, one question that is displayed is if you have level two EOF access, yes or no. Um, I would highly recommend that before you even request access, make sure that you do already have that EOF level two in place. Uh, it just speeds up the process for you to get access into the system. All right, so once you have this form fully filled out, you can click submit and a not notification will go out uh, for your access request and um, Creative and Rebecca will work together to provide the access accordingly. <coughs> Hold on one second, Kelly. So just so you guys are aware, excuse me, so a level two e-authentication is required in order to gain access to this partner portal. Um, but please note that as you can see here, there is the website where you will need to go if you do not already have that. But please note that this is not an NRCS system. Um, we, our CPP team, Creative Systems, which is helping to manage our portal, um, USDA, are, we do not have any ability to speed up the process. Um, if you have any questions, if you run into any issues with the EU authentication, you will need to work through, um, I believe on that website there is a help desk that you will need to work through. Um, so please note that, you know, there, there could be a time lag between the time that you think you will go in and um, get access. It is not a immediate, it happens that, you know, within 15 minutes of filling out the application because it does also require that you go in um, to a USDA office and that you do get verified in order for your level two e-authentication to be approved. So please just note, um, that it will take you a, a few days to potentially a week, depending upon how the system works, to gain that access. Rebecca? All right, so I've demonstrated how to request the access. Now, for those of you who do have access, I wanted to show you the two entry points on how to actually um, get into the system. So the first one is from this public site that you're seeing here. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we have a section for partner login. So if I were to come to this site and click login here, might not be set up in pre-prod. So I am, there we go. All right, so if you're already logged into EOS with your EOS credentials, you're gonna actually bypass this page. It will take you directly onto the landing page of the application. If you're not already logged into EOS through EOS, you will have, you will come to this page where you'll have to enter your EOS information. So let me go ahead and do that. Oh, well, I'm not set up in here. Yeah, I'm not set up in here. Uh, but the point is, once you enter the, your information here, um, you will be automatically directed to the partner portal landing page assuming your EOS and username are, uh, password and username are correct. Okay. All right, so that's just the public site access. There is another entry point into the system, 
and that is through a different URL. So it's going to be the same process um, where if you're already logged into EOS, once you go to the specific URL, which I'll show you in a moment, it will take you directly to the portal uh, homepage. Otherwise, you will come to the same exact e-authentication login screen where you'll have to enter your uh, user ID and password. So let me show you that. There we go. So this is a direct link again. So it bypassed all of the, you know, going to the public site, clicking login here from a partner. Instead, it takes you directly to this page. Otherwise, again, like I mentioned, it would log you directly into the application, assuming you were already logged in through eOff. All right. So I am going to do the rest of my demo from a sandbox um, so that it's not in the live environment. So let me log in as my test partner here. All right, so when you log into the application, this is going to be the landing page that you see. This is your home page. Um, just to go over some of the components on the home page to get you familiar with what you're looking at. So the first um, little green row here is your row of tabs. This little house icon uh, represents your home page, which is what I'm on now. We also have tabs for your RCPP proposals, excuse me, your projects. And we have a drop-down uh, for help if you want to submit an inquiry, um, look at any videos or guides. Where, this is also where you can download the uh, user guide. And you can also go to frequently asked questions. Um, maybe there's a basic question that you have that you know, we, could, we already have an answer for here. You can take a look. Uh, we have some general uh, FAQs here. We also have some specific to proposals and projects. All right, going back to the home page again. Um, on the left-hand side, this is where that, uh, it lists out if you need any help. So for example, let's say you run into an issue in the system, um, something's not working right or not as expected, or you just need some help figuring something out. You can log a ticket with the NRCS uh, help desk. So we have a link provided here that will navigate you, navigate you uh, directly to that uh, ticketing system. Uh, alternatively, you can email them directly or call them. Um, next below this section, we have a section for sample documents uh, where you can download uh, the sample documents in the section. So for example, we have general terms and conditions. So just clicking the link would then download that document. All right, so also you see this note here. Um, this is just something important that, uh, to remember, I was mentioning this before, that we really recommend using Chrome or the latest version of Internet Explorer, uh, just uh, due to uh, the fact that this is a, a brand new system. Um, so, uh, Next, we also just have some um, basic instructions, um, reminders, which I'll go through in a moment once we get into the project overview, um, how to place your, proj uh, your uh, project on the map, and just some screenshots of that process. So we'll go over that in a moment. Okay. Um, also at the top here, you'll see this little search bar. This is called the global search. Um, so for example, if you wanted to search for one of your projects, um, you could use this global search. You could search by project ID, which is the four-digit RCPP ID. Uh, you could search by full or, or partial project name start an end year of your project. So there's a couple of things that you can use uh, to search in this capacity. Um, next, uh, in order to actually log out of this application, if you see uh, on the top right here, we have my name. There's a little drop-down icon, and then I can just click log out. So that's how you log out of the application. Okay. All right, so how to access your projects. Uh, there's two ways to access a project. One is through the actual RCPP projects tab that you see here. All right, so a list of your projects that you have access to will be displayed. You'll see them by fiscal year, project number, project name, and the status of your project. The project number is actually a link that will, when you click the link, it will actually open up that specific project record. 
Um, as I was mentioning before, you can also search for your projects, which is another way to access your projects. So, for example, um, I, want, I know that I want to navigate to project 0017. I can type in 0017, click enter or click search, and these will be my search results. I can see that this, is, this one matched my search criteria, and I can navigate directly by clicking that link. All right. Now I'm going to give you a project overview. So this is your project record. Um, at the top here, uh, this part and these three little sections here, this is what is considered a highlights panel. This is where, at a quick glance, you can see what your project ID is, um, what, you know, that, the fact that it's a project, the project name, and status. Um, below that, we have subtabs. So within a project record, we have three subtabs, summary, details, and amendment agreements. Now, within the summary subtab, we have several collapsible section headers, as you see here. Now, I'll just quickly go through each of these sections so that you can see what information is in each section so that you know what, where to find um, the information as needed. So in the basic project information, this is where you'll see your project number, you know, your project name, who the lead state is, uh, the partner contact name, um, what kind of project is it, is it a, from a state funding pool or national. Um, we also have some contact information from the, for the partner and the status as well. You can also see what fiscal year this project was awarded in. So in this particular example, this is a 2014 project. Um, next section, we have project details where you can see the start year and end year of the project, any resource concerns, and any partner states of applicable. All right, next section, we have approval information. Now, most of this information here will probably be entered either by your state POC or the program team, but this information is here so that you are aware what, you know, what is in this section. So this is where you can see your agreement execution dates or expiration dates um, and request any changes here. Next section is the project partner summary. This information actually comes directly from the proposal. So this is what was said in the proposal that this particular partner would contribute if the project were to be awarded. So you can see the breakdown of total FA contributed, total TA contributed, etc. So you can see that information in this section. Next, we have the NRCS funding allocation. So you can see in this particular example, we don't have any funding allocated to this project, but this is where you would see how many, how much funds you have for this particular project. You can see the breakdown of how many, how much ASAP was allocated, EQIP, HFRP, CSP, CSP Acres, PL566, and then finally, the total NRCS funding for this project here. Okay. Next, we have a project deliverable summary where you can see what the deliverable status is. We also have a quick screenshot uh, taken from the deliverables page itself um, on how, how the deliverables were managed. Uh, you know, were they NRCS, TA, or FA, um, were they partner contributions, et cetera. So I'm sure at a later, you know, later training session we'll go over that, but this is just where that information resides. Next, we have the map details. Oh, I forgot to change this. So basically what would happen is when you, there would be a link here that you would click and it would open up a map and on that map, you just place a pin on that map on the approximate center or location of your project and then just click save. And what it does is it saves those coordinates um, so that way that information feeds into the public site map that I was showing you earlier during that presentation. All right. Then we have some system information, just who was this record last modified by and who owns the record. And finally, we have a project completion questionnaire which we'll go over at a later session, but just wanted you to be aware that that is here. And this doesn't come into play until later on once the project is close to being complete. All right. All right, so that's within the summary sub-tab of 
project. Next, we have a details subtab. And within the details subtab, we have what we refer to as related lists, uh, which are just data related to your project. So for example, we have your project deliverables that are related to your project, um, annual reports, uh, agreement reporting documents, inquiries, all of the project partners um, for this particular project, and any adjustment of terms, any adjusted gross income requests, any declines in ranking, and we also have some approval history and activity history. So these are just the related data for this particular project, and we'll focus on annual reports and agreement reporting documents today. Um, before I get into that, I just wanted to show you a couple more things about the project record itself. Um, last tab we have is amendment agreements, which um, I'm not gonna go over through uh, this training session, but this is where um, that information would reside. And lastly, at the top here, we have what are called action buttons um, for you to perform certain actions on your project record that can be found here. So again, just wanted to go through some of, some of these components on the record to get you familiarized with the terms and also what you're looking at and where to find certain information. All right, so now going back to annual reports. So every year, um, a, an annual report will be automatically copied onto your project record and can be found here. Now, the way it works, so let's say you have a project from 2014 to 2019. Well, in 2019, so for whatever year your project falls on, as long as it's within that start year and end year, for that, the annual report fiscal year will be uh, copied onto your project. Okay, so you can see I have two annual reports here. I have one from last year that's pending review and one that's in progress for this year, 2018, that's due November 30th um, next month. So to access the report, you will click the annual questionnaire link. Now the reason this report is in progress was be is because there's a, there's a good amount of questions on here. So I wanted to make sure that the answers were already inputted just so that you could see what this report looks like. Um, but just at a high level, basically you'll have sections with questions. And then with, next to each question, you'll have an answer box. So there's gonna be questions on education and outreach and section on, let's see what this is, implementation, as you see here. Next, we have questions on measurement of results, as you see here. Um, ranking and targeting, training, finally, partner contributions. Now, there, it is required that an answer is put in for each question. Now, there, are, there might be certain situations where a question may not apply to your specific project or situation. If that's the case, you at least need to put NA or some kind of answer, otherwise you're not gonna be able to save or submit, the, or you're not gonna be able to submit this annual report. So once all the questions are answered, you can click Save as Draft, um, which, will not submit your uh, record yet. So if you want to answer these questions, you know, maybe answer a couple of them, save it as a draft, then go back and answer the rest of the questions later. That's more than fine. You can also print your annual report questions and answers. Um, but when you're ready, you can click Submit. And you'll see that the Submit button and Save is grayed out, and it, so are your answers as well. Now, if your uh, annual report is has been submitted, which will the status will change to in prog or I'm sorry, pending review. If your report has not been reviewed yet, and let's say you made a mistake or you want to answer one of the questions slightly differently, you do have the opportunity to unsubmit, you know, re-enter your answers, save and submit again. So that's the annual report process. back here, so I'm back on the project again. Um, so now I'm just gonna quickly go through uh, the agreement reporting document requirements. So again, you're gonna go to your details tab, sub-tab of your project, and 
we have a related list for agreement reporting documents. Now, what will happen is most likely your state POC or the program team will actually set up and create these reporting requirements for you um, so that, that they can put in the template required uh, for you to satisfy these reports. So if I click View All, I have, this is where I can see what kind of report is it, um, any description that was provided by whoever set up the reporting requirement. I have the opportunity to download the template so that I can see exactly how I need to prepare my report and satisfy this particular requirement. I can see the due date of the report and whether it's required and whether I've completed it or not. Now, so what I would do first is download the template. that I can see what exactly I need to do to satisfy this report. Now let's assume I took that template, I set up my report, I'm ready to submit this report. So all I need to do then is navigate here and click Upload Report. And it's going to take me to this page where I can drag and drop or select a file. So just go ahead and click this. So once you select your file, then you're going to have to click Upload File. So your file won't be uploaded until you see this uh, message here, file uploaded successfully. Now if I go back to the project, go back to the details tab, and go back down to the agreement reporting documents. Now if I click view all again, so now I have the opportunity to download what I just uploaded. Um, I can also overwrite this document. So let's say I just uploaded this document. I think, well, actually, I want to make another update to this. I can update my document and click Upload Report again and upload a new document that would then overwrite this. Now, um, you will receive an email reminder one month and one week before this due date. Um, so that way you're aware of what needs to happen and when you need to complete these requirements by. That's pretty much it from my end. All right, great. Thank you. Um, we will now take questions. Ladies and gentlemen, as we move to Q&A, please feel free to place yourself into the question queue by pressing pound 2 on your telephone keypad. You will hear a notification when your line is unmuted. At the time, please state your name and question. And just a reminder, to submit a written question, use the chat panel on the right-hand side of your screen. Choose all panelists from the send to drop down menu. We do have written questions. So we have an agreement that states that reports are due October 30th. We have to have the info uploaded by next week. Or are all these reports due November 30th online? So for that, if you have an earlier deadline, um, and you don't have access to the portal, go ahead and make sure that you submit the report to your NRCS lead state so that way you meet your agreement reporting requirement. Um, but then, yes, you will just need to get your access and then get everything entered into the portal by that November 30th deadline. I have level two access, but with a different organization. Do I need to get approved again for the specific organization that I am managing RCPP for? I can answer this with this, Yanni. So as long as you have um, level uh, EOS level two, so there's a part two of requesting access to the RCPP partner portal. So you have to do the part two request access to the R for RCPP. So the same EOS can be utilized, yes. Will information under the Summary or Details tab be pre-populated, or will we be populating the info? Uh, good question. I should have mentioned that before. So that information will be pre-populated. Most of that information does come from the proposal. Now, in the case of most of your projects, that information was actually um, loaded via data migration. So um, if you see anything that looks out of place or something that needs to be updated. Um, I would suggest working with your state POC to make sure that information is correct. And if there are any issues outside of that, um, obviously uh, Creative can work with you to get that fixed. Is 
there are two people in the organization who will need access to the portal, do they both need to create user accounts and do they both need eAuth too? Yes, uh, both will need eAuth and they will have two separate uh, user accounts within the system. And just to note um, that if you would like to have more than one person have access to this, that please be aware that they are gaining access to the portal and all information in here. So if things can be changed, um, requests can be made. So you want to make sure that you are allowing only people that should legitimately have access um, and that you are saying is okay to potentially change, upload, um, you know, talk to the states or so forth. Um, because if they do not, and, and also receive email communications uh, will be the other piece. So, um, you know, just be aware and make sure that you think about that as you're deciding who should have access to the portal. Our agreement list narrative semi-annual reports separate from our quarterly, quarterly financial reports, we have been completing them twice a year. Is there a place for both reports in the portal, or should we just include both of them in one annual report due November 30th? Um, if you have a semi-annual that you then, if you could just go ahead and take that and just make that into one, that would be fine um, for our perspective. But make sure, again, we want to make sure that you are also abiding by your specific agreement reporting requirements. So we're not asking you to, you know, forget anything or say that that's not important. So please, please, please make sure that you know what your reporting requirements are within your agreement. I have eAuth access for a specific project, but I need to get access to another project that I has been passed on to me. What do I need to do to get access to the other project? Is that project within the same, are the both projects for the same partner organization? They responded yes. Um, then just um, either log a ticket for the help desk or we can work with you. We just need to identify which project you're missing and then we can easily give you access. Should be no problem. I have several. Sorry, go ahead. I have several RCPP projects and already have eAuth access. I currently cannot see the previous projects, only the new FY 2018 project. Okay, so the reason for that is, as I was mentioning before, a lot of these projects were loaded via data migration and at the time those projects were loaded with a default owner, sort of say. So once those owners are changed to the appropriate owners, then you'll see those projects um, for the prior fiscal year. So you'll need to go ahead and submit a help desk ticket in the system and identify which projects you need access to, um, and then we can verify that, and then you will be able to gain access. Our RCPP was just recently signed. We don't yet have much of anything to report. Our first report is due October 30th, with the next one due next spring. Should I hold off until next spring to report? No. So for that, just go ahead and get in there, because you'll get dinged in the system um, if you don't submit. And so just go ahead and put in there basically not applicable to all of the questions, um, and then just push submit. Unless you happen to have something to report. So do we direct our questions towards about the new annual report requirements? In the past, there has been no template for annual reports. Um, so actually, that was something that we were just discussing, uh, that there is not a template for the actual written narrative of the annual report. Um, so whatever you have been providing or your state has requested that you provide, um, just go ahead and talk to your state POCs and make sure that what you've been providing them for that written narrative is, is meeting their needs. When will the older projects be loaded to the portal? 
So currently all of the projects are loaded into the portal um, along with all of the information that we migrated over as we mentioned previously. Uh, and then one thing to note is that, you know, if you find a mistake in the data, please let um, your state POCs know that, you know, hey, this is a mistake, this needs to be changed or updated, because you may not be able to update everything, um, but let your state POC know so that way we can go ahead and get that fixed in the system. Uh, as you guys may have experienced in past, you know, when you do data migrations, things kind of can get a little wonky, um, and so we just want to get all that clean. Please know, not an intentional, um, you know, mistake on our part, the state's part, or even your part, um, just let us know as soon as you notice something. Would you briefly recap the two steps related to gaining full access? I think I heard mention of maybe needing to go into the NRCS office in order to gain EOS level two access. Please clarify that as well. There was also mention of something like an application user process. Not sure if I have the jargon right access to come after that. So for level two e authentication access, the first part will be you will fill out an online application in that sense. Um, I believe then after you do that, you get an email to whatever email you've listed. It then tells you to go into your local or nearest USDA office. Um, you have to take some sort of identifying piece of information. Uh, I believe the email lays out what is acceptable. Um, and then you need to go in and you will have to show that. Um, and I would take the email with you. And then the person that helps you will then have to log into the system and then verify that you are who you say you are um, at that point. And so then after they do that, you will then get another email via system, the e-authentication system that then lets you know that your e-authentication has been completed. Uh, and then at that point is when you would log into the Salesforce um, or the RCPP portal via the link that will be provided to you and you would fill out the new user request. And at that point is where you would go through, fill out that name, your business organization, um, and so forth. And then we will work with Creative Systems to make sure that, you know, when you request access that you, we do have a project with that organization and so forth. Um, and then after they link you to the account, um, then you will be able to gain access to the portal. So please, please, please be aware that this does take um, some time. So right now, just so everybody's kind of aware, um, Creative is actually looking at all of our active projects and the lead partners that have been identified previously and trying to find all of the e-authentication IDs that are kind of on record for these people. So, and then they will go ahead um, and link anybody that has an existing e-authentication, um, so that way you can just log right in. And those of you that do not, they will just be waiting until you fill out the new user registration and tell us that, yes, you have your level two e -auth, and then they will have to go through the same process um, to find your e-authentication ID and link you. We have requirements in our SOWs to do performance reporting twice a year. Do those go into the annual report twice a year? No. So the annual report is only going to be opened once a year. Um, they will always be, our, our annual questionnaire will always be due on November, by November 30th um, of that year. So no, you do not need to put any additional reports into the system. For financial reporting, we are scheduled to report quarterly. Should that be submitted through the portal or easy Fed grants? Okay, so for that, um, again, the portal is not 
the financial reporting um, official system. So it is just if you would like to upload it in there. It is a, not a requirement that you do so. So if you are in EZFED grants, then please make sure that you upload your financial documents to EZFED grants. If you are not in EZFED grants, please make sure that you are providing those financial reporting documents to your feed state POC to make sure you are in compliance with your agreement. Again, this is not trying to, to change your reporting requirements in your actual agreement, so please make sure that you are aware of that. And if you have specific questions about your reporting um, requirements, please either review your agreement or make sure to talk to your lead state POC. Where can we find the online form to begin the process to gain our level two EOS? Since the process seems lengthy, can we have written summary of the process so we can make sure our RCPP reports are turned in on time? So again, um, I will send out an email with the link, and actually we did send out an email um, to everyone, I think it was yesterday, um, that included the recording from the October 16th webinar, um, included the link for the Level 2 e-authentication website, um, and included the link for the RCPP portal. So again, we will send out the same email um, again, so that way you will have it as soon as we get this recording um, from from our our recording system. So with that, again, just click on the website and it will walk you through the process for your level two e authentication. And we do have a verbal question. Caller, caller, your lines are muted. Please go ahead. Caller. Caller, your phone may be muted. Please unmute your phone. At this time, there are no further questions in the queue. Great, thank you. So with that, um, I thank you so much for taking your time today to join us on this webinar. Um, please be aware again, just a couple of things, that if you have specific questions about your reports, please make sure that you reach out to your lead state POC or state conservationist to make sure that those are done. Um, again, the portal is not taking the place of EZFED grants if you are in EZFED grants, um, nor is it the official record keeping um, of all of the documents that you may need to be submitting per your agreement. So please make sure that you um, are talking to your, your lead state POC about uh, any other reporting requirements that are out there. And with that, I really thank you. and. Please um, have a great day. Thank you for joining today's conference. The call has now concluded and you may disconnect.